I see. Uhuru, brothers and sisters and comrades. This is Amalia Chatel, I'm chairman of the African People's Socialist Party. And I'm leader of the international Uhuru movement and African revolution. I wanna to talk to you briefly about the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. and the struggle that we have to be engaged in to complete the black revolution of the 60s. This is an important discussion because I know throughout the United States in particular, and even in some other places, people are engaged in discussions and events surrounding this date of April 4th, which is the anniversary of the April 4th, 1968 murder of Martin Luther King by the United States government. And King was an extraordinarily significant leader in the anti-colonial struggle of African people in the United States in general, but also peoples around the world looked to King as an example and an inspiration for the struggle that people around the world were engaged in and continue to be engaged in against white power. And so uh, even though we have a situation where King's uh, significance has been relatively uh, diminished by restricting his uh, influence or the perception of his, his influence as being uh, some kind of a local preacher in the United States uh, who just stood up for nonviolence and something to that effect. Uh, there's been this ongoing struggle to contain uh, the definition of who Martin Luther King was to restrict this understanding to very narrow parameters. But even that's an improvement uh, because in the recent past, people wouldn't even talk about King's uh, death because to talk about his death is to talk about his assassination. And to talk about his assassination raises the question over and over again of who killed King and why did he die? And especially since all of us or most of us know of the harassment that King experienced from the United States government, how uh, the guy who was at the moment, the man who at the time was the executive director of the domestic political police in the United States, J. Edgar Hoover, <clears throat> had actually attempted to force King to commit suicide and had uh, followed King, had, had put uh, electronic devices even in his bedrooms and bathrooms and things like that, and uh, did everything could to get King uh, uh, pushed out of the political scene and had even chosen uh, a successor to King uh, that uh, should have prevailed once King was killed. So there's little doubt in, in our minds, most of us, that King was murdered by the United States government. It certainly was a part of the trajectory that we are familiar with that the United States government was on uh, when it came uh, to how they were treating Martin Luther King, how they were experiencing Martin Luther King. Uh, but <clears throat> up until recently, it was only January 4th, January uh, uh, 17th and January, uh, the birth month of Martin Luther King that was promoted. Uh, so, you know, Stephen Wonder made a song, you know, happy birthday that was promoted globally. And uh, the rulers of this country in different places in the United States would changed street signs for Martin Luther King and people were given a day off from work if they had a job, depending on what kind of job one had. So Africans had an opportunity to now celebrate the death of this man, Martin Luther King, who never fought to get his name on street signs or to have highways, strips named for him or to have barbecues and grills, uh, grills pulled out and barbecues on a regular basis. He fought for the liberation of our people. He fought uh, from his own perspective uh, in trying to uh, ameliorate at least the consequence of living as a colonized people within the United States. And his worldview actually extended beyond the United States. But the point I'm making is that, uh, that historically after they murdered King, 
Uh, they would talk about King's birth and they would give us an opportunity to celebrate King's birth, but they did nothing uh, to encourage any discussion about King's death uh, on, on April 4th, which was uh, something uh, that would require some kind of discussion about how King died. So we see more and more people now are able to do events on April 4th. And many different organizations do events on April 4th. Uh, and uh, April 4th, uh, uh, it has become uh, something that's recognized as a viable and legitimate uh, 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 opportunity to talk about Martin Luther King. But usually, even when they talk about King under these circumstances, and this is what you and I really need to understand, uh, that what has been offered to us, either by the United States government and the corporations that suddenly learned to love King, you see in cities throughout the United States where there are, are, are government officials and even in states uh, where <coughs> that, uh, where African people are treated like dirt uh, by the government and various in everything they do, uh, from housing uh, to jobs to education uh, to police murders, etc. The you will see these government officials who will uh, bring out uh, Martin Luther King as an example, and and they now proclaim some kind of unity with Martin Luther King uh, now that he's good and dead. And now that the US government has succeeded in eliminating most of the revolutionary forces who existed at the time of King's uh, life uh, from the scene to contest what it is that they are defining. So let's look at Martin Luther King. Let's look at King beyond uh, how uh, we are being asked and to perceive him. Let's look at King's life and death uh, beyond uh, something as a single, simple event that just happened. And so we have an event that commemorates Martin Luther King. They've even given us an opportunity to have a day of service. So you can go out and do some charity work, especially around, around his birth month. Uh, let's look beyond what they offer us uh, to uh, around Martin Luther King. You know, King was killed, murdered, assassinated by the United States government on April 4th. 1968. Most people uh, have, have forgotten if they knew in the first place that two days after that, on April 6, 1968, little Bobby Hutton, 17 years old, uh, became the first part, member of the Black Panther Party to be assassinated by uh, the United States government in Oakland, California, where they gunned him down. So there was King who was killed on, on April 4th, who was murdered on April 4th, 1968. And then there was Bobby Hutton, member of the Black Panther Party, killed in 19. Uh, uh, 68 on, on April 6th. And of course, there are some who would uh, suggest that the reason that Hutton and King are not talked about in the same vein or in the same way is because King uh, promoted and preached nonviolence and Hutton, uh, Bobby Hutton was a member of the Black Panther Party, the first member of the Black Panther Party to be killed by police uh, who, who uh, uh, believed in violent revolution. This is, this is one thing that people would have us understand as a possibility that, that, that Hutton is no, not uh, remembered in the same light or in the same context of King, but that's wrong. So uh, let's look at this question because most people, and that includes African revolutionaries, uh, do not understand uh, that uh, King, uh, Hutton, and an ass assortment of other revolutionary forces were murdered by the United States government. And, at a time uh, precisely because uh, this social system, the United States government uh, is a part of a social system. It is the big dog, the hegemon of a social system. It's not just a situation that existed in Memphis, Tennessee when King was killed. It's not just a situation that exists in Harlem, New York when they killed Malcolm X or, uh, in Oakland, uh, California where they killed Bobby Hutton. There is a global system uh, that came into being through colonial slavery, through Europe, um, leaving Europe, leaving an impoverished and disease-stricken Europe uh, and attacking the rest of the world. Uh, and, and in this process of uh, colonial slavery, which is what it was, and you must understand it in this fashion also, because in the United States, what we have is a situation, not just in the United States, but it treats 
is treated this way, uh, generally speaking, uh, through Europe uh, as uh, slavery of the enslavement of African people being something like a rite of passage, that this just happens and this is the, and it happens naturally. And then after a while, uh, things uh, get normal after we go through this rite of passage. They treat it as a part of just a normal part of US history that we, uh, that we understand uh, as that. Uh, but the fact of the matter is much deeper uh, than that, much more significant than that, because the United States uh, was a part of a, 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 a global political economy a political economy that embraced the entire world. And the truth of the matter is the entire world was hooked together in a single political and economic configuration stemming from the attack on Africa 600 years ago that brought the entire world uh, into a single economy. And while many people like to uh, talk about capitalism being a mode of production, the reality is the mode of production the, form, the, the process through which all production and social life occurs uh, in, in, within this system uh, has its origin in colonial slavery. Colonial slavery is the mode of production, the foundation of everything that we see happening in the world. And King died uh, at a time where this whole colonial mode of production is, was in a state of crisis. It caused oppressed people everywhere were rising up to fight back against this social system. So it was not just Martin Luther King who made good speeches that we are talking about. It's not, they didn't kill Martin Luther King because he made good speeches. They killed Martin Luther King because he was a part of an intricate process of masses of oppressed people around the world struggling to end this relationship with white power. With the United States government, of course, being the headquarters of white power in the world, it continues to be, even though it's shaky today, uh, much shakier than it has been in many other instances, though when they killed King, it was experiencing a severe crisis and a state of shakiness. So let's talk a little bit about that. So as we said before, two days after the assassination of King on April 6th, 17-year-old uh, Bobby Hutton was gunned down by the police in Oakland, California, which is 2,000 miles away uh, from Memphis, Tennessee, uh, where King was assassinated. And then uh, when we look at uh, this, we see that they that what we are looking at with King and, and, and Hutton's assassination uh, is, are, is, is a related responses to the crisis of this social system, which Africans and other oppressed uh, of the world are forced to, within which we are forced to fend for ourselves. And, and an African internationalist investigation, which is a different kind of investigation that you will get in any, any discussion, a different kind of analysis that you will get any place on today. In Memphis, Tennessee, right now, uh, they've dragged in Jesse Jackson, a whole bunch of other people who will talk about King and how wonderful King was and how he brought peace and how he brought love, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's the kind of thing that you get. What we are saying is the United States government killed King. They killed Malcolm. They killed Bobby Hutton. Uh, because the system itself that's based on colonial domination of Africans and other oppressed people around the world was in a state of severe stress because of the struggles of African and other people around the world. Can we play, prove it? Of course we can. And so we're saying that uh, before the political assassination of King and Hutton in 1968, Malcolm X was murdered by the United States government on February 21st, 1965. Uh, and as you know, uh, uh, Fred Hampton would be killed uh, in 1959, uh, in December 1959, the Sharpeville massacre occurred in South Africa uh, in 1960, uh, where at least 250 African people were gunned down, were wounded. Uh, 20,000 Africans uh, had marched about 30 miles south of, south of Johannesburg, South Africa, uh, and 69 of those people were killed during as they shot them down. And the only thing they were doing was marching on our own land and, uh, and demanding of the colonial powers that we be able to walk in our own land without carrying passes, identifications. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, whether you're in South Africa, or whether you're in New York or Philadelphia, where they have stopped and frisked, where they stop African people on a regular basis demanding passes. They just don't call it a pass law they did in South Africa. And why did they do that? Because they have to have severe restrictions on the colonized because they can't trust us, because they know that we live under colonial domination, colonial oppression, and we're subject to break out any day. In fact, resistance is a permanent 
feature of our existence in this country. We're always resisting, although we don't often know what it is that we're resisting. And you got a black petty bourgeois leadership as they characterize themselves who are hostile to resistance, who don't want us to resist, who, uh, uh, who are always trying to calm us down and tell us to do things that they like to characterize the right way. Don't rock the boat sort of politics. So they kill Hutton, they kill Malcolm, they kill Martin Luther King in Sharpville, uh, South Africa. Again, part of the same colonial structure. That's what we're talking about. Colonialism all around the world. They gunned down, uh, they, 250 Africans were killed or wounded uh, and, 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 and 69 of them were killed. 50 women and children were involved in this killing as well. So this is a statement of the stress that the system was going through that rests upon the colonial oppression of all of us. We're talking about a saying that in 1964, of course, uh, the Palestinian Liberation Organization was founded. This is a basis, part of the basis for the stress of the social system. We're talking about Palestine. People want to be free. This is the kind of movement that occurred during this period. Patrice Lumumba, of course, was assassinated by imperialist forces, including the United States, France, Belgium, uh, on, on January 1961. Uh, Malcolm X, as you know, appeared before at the Oxford Union on December 3rd, 1964. Uh, and they wanted Malcolm there because the movement in the United States had reached a certain kind of cross point, uh, a crossroad. In fact, this was generally happening around the world. And Malcolm was such an influential figure for the revolutionary anti-colonial movement. So Oxford, which is this university that trains uh, a high level of, 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 uh, of un forces who are going to enter into government. Uh, these are students who they will send back to India, send back to various places around the world and in England itself that are going to be leaders in these various countries. And so they want Malcolm to come because the civil rights movement had reached a certain kind of impacts because Malcolm uh, and his philosophy, Malcolm had broken from the nation of Islam. Philosophically, uh, he was uh, really challenging this colonial question and through Malcolm X in part, Colonial, the anti-colonial movement was getting traction inside the United States as opposed to the civil rights movement that talked about we shall overcome and integrating into the system. So Malcolm X was a fundamental force on the rise. And so Oxford, they wanted, they bring up, they brought him to Oxford to speak. And they brought him to Oxford to speak because they want to get a taste of what it is that they were up against intellectually, philosophically, ideologically. And Malcolm was an extraordinary hit at Oxford, in fact, got a standing ovation as a consequence of that 80 days later, they killed him. And I'm mentioning Oxford because uh, Oxford is an international institution because the philosophy, the ideas of Malcolm X had international reach and it was provoking a thought and ideas and it was a part of an ongoing development of ideological uh, development, intellectual development among the colonized people that they saw as a severe threat. And when Malcolm spoke there and the response he got there, uh, they killed Malcolm 80 days after Oxford. That's meaningful. And so, uh, and all of this of course is happening within the context uh, at the moment of the Vietnam War, the, uh, the American war against Vietnam, which was a colony. It was a French colony. France had controlled Vietnam and, and had for the longest period of time. And now the Vietnamese people are fighting against French colonialism first, and they're fighting the French. And then, of course, as you know, the United States, uh, when, when, when France was defeated by the heroic Vietnamese people in 1954, Dinh Dinh Phuong, you heard Malcolm X speak about this on one occasion or more. Uh, when, when the Vietnamese were successful in, in, in defeating France, the United States took it up and went into Vietnam. And so this whole struggle in Vietnam was something that was complicating all kinds of things uh, for white power, colonial powers in the United States and around the world. We have to look at the assassination of, Mal of, of, of uh, Martin Luther King Jr. And, and anticipate or uh, as a part of a requirement, an analysis to, uh, to struggle uh, to complete the black revolution of the 60s that they assumed they would uh, crush uh, with the assassination of Malcolm, with the assassination of, of Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King, of Fred Hampton, and all these other forces that were there. So uh, again, all of this has happened within the context of the, of the Vietnam War. And the crisis inside the United States is deep and profound. Politically, uh, it has thrown things uh, in a frenzy. 
Uh, so this war is eating up all kinds of treasure from the United States. It is losing influence and face all around the world because of this grotesque, brutal murder that it is involved in against the heroic people of Vietnam. Uh, and it is creating uh, uh, a political instability inside the United States itself. Rebellions by African people are happening all over the United States. People are engaged in a state of struggle resistance. The same, similarly, France uh, is experiencing uh, rebellion uh, from African students in particular, African people in particular who are in France, and then from the French students, uh, university students, because the colonial foundation of this country, when you upset that, you upset not only the economic uh, economics of a particular country or the particular system, but it challenges the ideological foundation that rests upon uh, this economic, the whole superstructure, the ideas that uh, support and influence and defend and promote the, the economic uh, basis of the society also comes under assault. That's what you saw of France. You saw in France, you saw the movement of, uh, of even white people and particular students in France which is all inside the United States as a consequence of the struggle of Black people in the United States, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, Black Panther Party. You see the movement of white people now because the basic ideological assumptions that has held the system together, uh, this, these assumptions are now under assault. This is a revolutionary travesty uh, for the social system. It is existential crisis that they're engaged in. And so they begin to move to crush and destroy uh, this problem. And, and they destroy it not just in terms of fighting and killing King and Malcolm and killing Panthers. So something like 30 Black Panther members of the Black Panther Party was killed in 1968 alone. The co-founder of the African People's Socialist Party, Lawrence Mann, he would be killed in 1973. So you had all of this stuff happening uh, to us, but inside the, 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 the social system, inside the establishment of the colonial bourgeoisie, uh, we saw this crisis blow up too. Uh, just like recently we saw on January 6th where uh, a group of white settler colonists uh, inside the United States attacked uh, the capital to engage in this attempt to coup. Uh, we saw similar things happening inside the United States. Inside the United States, uh, the, the, the US uh, uh, elements of the US state assassinated the president of the United States, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. What was happening? is that the, that the system couldn't tolerate uh, any kind of ideological and political struggle and differences anymore. It couldn't tolerate it, it wasn't open to that. Uh, and so Kennedy emerges and, and he's influenced and impacted. I don't mean he becomes some kind of revolutionary, even close to it. It was Kennedy, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, who designed the uniforms and established a strategy for the Green Beret and, and counterinsurgency uh, 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 forces that were used by the military that they're using in places even like uh, uh, like uh, 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 today uh, against Russia. Kennedy was one of those, but the, the situation was such that he was swept up in all the policies and political determinations that he was trying to make, challenge the status, challenge the old way of doing things, and Kennedy died. He was killed uh, by the US government. And then following Kennedy, of course, we saw his brother Robert Kennedy, who was also assassinated. So this was a part of the process that we were looking at because the whole social system was in a state of crisis. King has to be understood in that fashion. He was not just some individual who made good speeches, who, who people like to quote now because he believed in nonviolence. Independent of what he believed in terms of violence and nonviolence, he was part of a struggle that was happening globally against a colonial mode of production. The masses of black people, brown people, yellow people around the world were rising up against colonialism. And however you wanna characterize it, King was an extraordinary influential person there. Malcolm was an extraordinary influential person there. And what we were seeing is people all around the world who were making this struggle were being targeted by the United States government. So, uh, so uh, as you know, uh, uh, many of you may know, uh, we mentioned the Vietnam, Vietnam War or the American War in Vietnam. Uh, we talk about 63 and, and 68, uh, the murders of uh, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, who was US president, and the murder of his brother, who was a candidate for president uh, in, uh, in those uh, 63 and, and 68, respectively. Uh, and then we know that uh, Che Guevara, who was participating magnificently in this whole anti-colonial revolutionary movement. King is on one side in, in this anti-colonial movement. King was a part of it. 
Bobby Hutton was a part of it. Malcolm X was a part of it. Huey P. Newton was a part of it. Lawrence Mann of Jomo uh, of the Black, of the African People's Socialist Party was a part of it. Jomo, the Hunter Militant Organization, engaged in the extraordinary struggle that was a, a precursor uh, to the advent of the African People's Socialist Party. Was a part of it. All over the world, people were struggling to overturn the colonial mode of production, and the U.S. government and all the imperial powers. Uh, responded to it. So they 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 wounded Che Guevara in battle uh, uh, in Bolivia as, when he was a uh, leading struggle to uh, to uh, for the ending of colonialism uh, throughout uh, South America. And uh, and after they wounded and captured uh, Guevara, they assassinated him on uh, October 9th, 1967. And so uh, today, you know, many Africans throughout the United States are going to be holding events and celebrations marking the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. And as I said, that's an improvement of sort because for the longest period of time, April 4th, uh, the anniversary of his death was uh, ignored as any event of significance uh, because the United States government did nothing to recognize his assassination. Uh, because of this, uh, uh, they would have to ask the question that then arises of why, how King died, who killed Martin Luther King? Even his family, Martin Luther King's family, now uh, uh, disagrees with uh, and dismissed the official explanation of how King died. And so uh, the United States government, the date of his birth was the occasion of his king that had had to be of, of some consequence. And so, uh, you know, they gave, uh, they created a holiday to mark, mark his birthday, and now Africans can get a day off from work if she has a job. And barbecue grills can be worked overtime on the anniversary of his of his, of, of his of, of his birth. So the U.S. settler colonial government and African petty bourgeois opportunists now promote a day of service for individuals to do good deeds uh, and charitable events in the memory of King. This is during his birth month, and things that do not disrupt at all the normal functioning of the system as King was likely to do when he was alive, and as the, which was the basis for them murdering King in the first place. That's why they killed King, because he disrupted the system, not because he was having barbecues, not because he was saying, name a street for me, not because he was trying to get a holiday for people to have the day off, but because he was trying to do something. He initiated the Poor People's Campaign. He initiated this whole struggle uh, to mobilize African people to resist, to learn how to resist, et cetera. And so, uh, uh, so anyway, that's why we can say that uh, now that we're talking about his assassination, that's an element of improvement that, that's there now. Uh, and because this uh, recognition of King's assassination pushes uh, to the surface, uh, the a greater likelihood uh, of, of a discussion of how he died, who killed him. Uh, and this is not a discussion that is welcomed by the United States government or many African petty bourgeois lick spittle uh, opportunists. Uh, so there's, this is because there's no doubt that Dr. Martin Luther King uh, met his death at the hands of the United States government, regardless of whether James Earl Ray, who was identified as King's killer by the United States government, was a participant or just a fall guy, a passive who was used to take the blame uh, is no doubt that the government, the United States government, the American government, the government of Joe Biden, the government that's involved in making war against Russia, using Ukraine as the means to do that, they killed King. They killed King. Martin Luther King, the man that so many people, you uh, proclaim to have so much love and affection for, was killed by Joe Biden's government, by Hillary Clinton's government, by Bill Clinton's government, by the government of uh, Barack Hussein Obama. They killed King. And so, uh, uh, so that even when uh, many Africans and others are able to recognize the obvious hand of the United States government in King's assassination, his murder is usually treated again as just one off a certain, a kind of event that, that we have to denounce. And the same thing's true with Malcolm X, just a single event that we now have celebrations around. We get our Malcolm X t-shirts, we get the big X on the t-shirt and things like that and hold fond mem memorials and celebrations. Uh, but never are the murders of these two incredibly influential freedom fighters mentioned as part of the same process of attack on the liberation struggle of our people. 
Malcolm X has been even commemorated by his settler colonial killers with a poster stamp bearing his image and parks and streets have been honored with his name. That's it. And so however, with the, within the African People's Socialist Party and the Uhuru movement under our leadership, an African internationalist analysis brings us to uh, a different conclusion from those who usually, those which are usually espoused by different personalities and organizations. We recognize that the murder, uh, murders of King and Malcolm X were expressions of an existential crisis that the colonial mode of production was experiencing that made it necessary for the US government to murder them, even as the colonial powers were attempting to stem the crisis, creating anti-colonial movements sweeping the earth, uh, sweeping the earth and causing chaos inside the US government and the social system itself that would lead them to assassinate a US president and, and to uh, uh, assassinate his brother to overthrow uh, U.S. President James, uh, this uh, Richard Mill, uh, House Nixon, uh, and his Vice President Spiro Agnew, uh, all of this activity of crisis happening within the social system. This is the context of the death of Martin Luther King. Do not allow anybody to talk to you about King's death, isolated from the rest of what was happening in the world and what was happening in this country. King was an extraordinarily influential person because of he was a part of an anti-colonial movement. Call it civil rights, call it what you want to, but objectively speaking, he was a part of an anti-colonial movement just as Malcolm X was a part of an anti-colonial movement. Uh, one difference in the two of them is that Malcolm X was clearer uh, that he was engaged in anti-colonial movement and refused to contain this struggle that he was involved in by definition uh, to something about getting the white people to like you. He made it clear that the struggle had to be for power, black power, and that's what he, that's what killed him. That's why they killed uh, Malcolm X. And they, but they killed King because he was a part, he was caught up in the same motion of the colonized people around the world fighting against colonialism because he was incredibly influential in that struggle. So uh, we want to say that uh, uh, that the, 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 the murder of King and, and Malcolm X uh, uh, are inseparable and that uh, they're inseparable uh, in the same way uh, that the 1973 murder of a uh, co-founder of the African People's Socialist Party is part of the same bloody process the colonial powers were engaged in to contain their illegitimate domination of the peoples of the world. And so uh, the fact is that the foundation of white rule, of white affluence and white world domination is threatened by anti-colonial struggles throughout the world that were achieving greater ideological clarity and political unity during the time frame where, that Martin Luther King was murdered. That Martin Luther King was murdered. King did not commit suicide. King did not slip in the bathtub on a piece of soap and crack his head. King was murdered and somebody murdered him. The same government that we know threatened him, the same government that tried to get him to commit suicide murdered him. And if anybody, doesn't believe that's the truth, uh, even if you don't want to look at the objective evidence that we are, are familiar with, that we know about, then even if you look at the speech that Martin Luther King made the day before his assassination, it was clear King know, knew then that they were going to kill him. Look at that speech that was made on April 3rd, uh, uh, 1968. Uh, Google it and see what uh, that speech that King you can see in that speech, the words he said, the demeanor uh, that he had, that King was aware that he was going to kill him. Uh, they were going to kill him because they had been making all kinds of signals. They had tried to get him to commit suicide. And they, if, he, they, if they couldn't get him to uh, commit suicide, if they couldn't get him to quit, if they couldn't get him to back off, uh, put himself in jail by cowardly uh, stepping out of it, then they, they would do it themselves physically. And that's what we see. So uh, part of what we're looking at in terms of the threat to the whole uh, uh, colonial foundation, the whole colonial mode of production, uh, there are several kinds of historical events of significance that you should look at. And you know, Bandung Conference that happened, I think, 1955 uh, uh, in Bandung, Indonesia. And then there was the Tri-Continental Conference, uh, which was extremely important because the Tri-Continental uh, Conference that happened in, in Havana, Cuba, uh, designed to merge the, uh, the African-Asian solidarity with Latin America and to develop a movement uh, with the goal of international revolution. This happened in Cuba. 
Uh, and it was one of the largest gatherings of anti-imperialists in the whole world. Uh, and uh, one of the key topics that was discovered that, that they talked about was the involvement of the United States in Vietnam. Uh, they talked about uh, uh, how, how uh, uh, the United States was uh, dealing with uh, uh, other former colonies around the world. And uh, they talked about how they had to collaborate and support and use solidarity uh, to, uh, to and revolutionary internationalism to fight against the United States and which was the chief hegemon, which was the big dog, which was the, the, the government that was at the center uh, of this whole social system, this whole mode, colonial mode of production. And so at that tri conference, uh, there was something like uh, 500 delegates from the various liberation movements of 82 different countries and uh, all kinds of forces that were there. And the conference uh, also uh, uh, not only looked at colonialism uh, outside of the United States and imperialism as they characterize it, but they broadened the scope of the, of the movement uh, to ex explicitly uh, characterize their unity with the movements of, of Black people in the United States, such as the so-called civil rights movement, because this was a part of the colonial movement. And so uh, for the, 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 the delegates of the tri uh, uh conference, that made a lot of sense because the United States was the chief hegemon, the chief uh, 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 imperialist thug that was killing and, and looting uh, countries and peoples and dominating countries and peoples around the world. And so they even embraced the civil rights movement as a thing they had to be concerned with. Cuba uh, offered up all the resources it had to any revolutionary organization in the world when at, at this conference. This happened in 1966. So uh, what we are looking at uh, was an existential crisis of a whole social system, a rotten, foul social system, white nationalist socialist system that had as its foundation the enslavement of African people and oppressed peoples around the world and cannot live, cannot exist without that enslavement. And so when you see all this movement happening uh, with peoples all around the world, from Patrice Lumumba in Congo, he had to die. Uh, Kwame Nkrumah uh, in Ghana, he had to be overthrown and die. Uh, we uh, saw this happening with oppressed peoples uh, around uh, the world uh, to elders to stabilize the social system. King died, and not as just some individual who made good sermons, who made good speeches that white liberals have now learned to really love and appreciate, and even reactionary white governments have learned to love and appreciate King, uh, perhaps even independent of his will. Uh, was a part of the anti-colonial movement uh, that, it, that was existing throughout the world that was shaking the whole white nationalist, the whole colonial mode of, of, of production to its foundation. That's why it's really important for us to recognize uh, this because if we recognize this, then we understand our responsibility is not just to have ceremonies holding up Martin Luther King. Our responsibility is to complete the black revolution of the 1960s that King was a part of, the complete the black revolution of the 1960s that little Bobby Hutton uh, from the Black Panther Party was a part of, to complete the black revolution of the 1960s that Fred Hampton was a part of, to complete the black revolution of the 1960s that Che Guevara was a part of, to complete the black revolution of the 1960s of Nkrumah and Lumumba and all of those freedom fighters and Lawrence Mann of the African People's Socialist Party. So that's what you need to do. That's what we need to do. You should join the African People's Socialist Party, become an African internationalist. Uh, you need to have an African internationalist understanding of the world. If you understand that, if you understand that this is a global uh, uh, economy, a world that has been hooked together, uh, not by some kind of magic, not because of uh, some kind of capitalist production, but because of colonialism. Colonialism is what gave, uh, was the foundation for the emergence of capitalism. It was the mode of production that brought uh, into existence this current uh, configuration, political and economic configuration of the world. It is the mode of production that was stirring up things uh, 105 years ago after the Russian Revolution, uh, when America and, and all of the colonial powers in the world attacked Russia. It was the colonial mode of production. It was a, uh, and this was something that happened uh, during the first imperialist world war or World War I, as they like to call it. Uh, where the white powers of the world were fighting to redivide the world, to redivide us, 
to redivide the colonized people of the world. And Russia was on the right side of this question uh, at the, as, as, as a part of what would become the Soviet Union to liberate the oppressed peoples of the world. And this is why Russia is under assault today. Um, not because he's a, it's a socialist country or anything like that, but because it, it continues to be something that exists outside of the political economy that uh, came into existence through slavery and colonialism. Slavery and colonialism. The colonial mode of production is the foundation for everything that we see happening economically, politically in the world today. Martin Luther King died because of this. And we have a responsibility to complete that revolution and not just uh, uh, celebrate and, and have barbecues and, and uh, participate uh, in, in uh, beer swilling uh, uh, kinds of, uh, uh, of uh, celebrations. So join the African People's Socialist Party. Go to APSP Uhuru. Dot org, A P S P Uhuru, U H U R U dot org, or you can call 727 914 3617. That's 727 914 3617. And then I want everybody here to understand why uh, what we are talking about is makes it necessary for you to attend the Black is Back Coalition for Social Justice, uh, uh, Peace, uh, and Reparations, six annual electoral school. Uh, where we are going to be teaching people how to run for office and we're going to be helping ordinary people to break the monopoly of the African petty bourgeoisie and white liberals, the white people who love us and take responsibility ourselves. When they kill Malcolm, when they kill Fred Hampton, when they kill the revolutionary forces, when uh, uh, they did this at the same time, they were putting forth the 1965 uh, Voting Rights Act. So you're supposed to be able to vote, but they kill uh, every revolutionary that they could. They kill and destroy the political line, the philosophical basis, the program for revolution. And then the only thing you had left was the Democratic Party. And that's what they've given you now. The Democratic Party is a rotten, foul, a uh, party that's a colonial party. So come to this uh, um, Black is Black Coalition for Social Justice, Peace and Reparations Six Electoral Campaign School happening April 9th and 10th. Uh, it's at 4101 West Florissant Avenue in St. Louis. And you can call 314-380-8013 for more information. And that's gonna be 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, five uh, to 5 a.m. Uh, and, uh, of the 5 p.m. So you can register at blackisbackcoalition.org and you should. And it's gonna be virtual and there's gonna be a limited seating due to COVID and masks are going to be required. And you're gonna learn how to do recalls with traders and from our own communities and others and people who lie to our people all the time and they can do it with impunity. We are gonna teach people how to recall them, how to make them have to fight for their very lives politically. Uh, and then uh, uh, we want uh, you to recognize that in, Oak, in, in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, on the north side of St. Louis, Missouri, there's a One Africa, One Nation Farmers Market that happens every week, every Saturday at 4101 West Florence Avenue. That's in St. Louis. Uh, so uh, let's uh, remember Martin Luther King, not as uh, some nice individual, but somebody who shook uh, the colonial mode of production to its foundation uh, when participating in the struggle along with other anti colonial forces in the United States and around the world. I want to thank you, brothers and sisters and comrades. Uhuru. Vanguard up. Vanguard up.